Hello, this is George from Spirit Timber Graphics. In this video, we'll break down how this awesome looking background is made. That was requested by one of my viewers. Thank you so much. So once I saw the comment of yours asking me how this background is made, I was so happy and hyped to get some sort of feedback on my videos. One of the first ones that I decided to jump straight in and start creating this tutorial. And without further rambling, let's actually start creating this from scratch. So let's create a new composition, name it Taurus, and let's choose 1000 by 1000 for the dimensions. Click OK. Select the ellipse tool and make sure you, your fill is set to none and your stroke is set to something like 160 pixels and draw an ellipse like that and align it in the middle and let's uh, rename it to Taurus to stay organized. Then Let's go ahead and search for a uh, four color gradient in our effects and presets and drag the four color gradient to our Taurus. And I'm not going to go and choose the right colors here. Of course, you can do that on your own. I'm just going to adjust the points like shown. Make sure you align the gradient points on the Taurus itself to get nice colors. All right. So next step would be to select a Taurus and click Control D to duplicate it. And let's rename this to Shadow. And let's actually go ahead and remove the full color gradient from it because we don't need it here. And let's change its color to black and let's reduce the stroke size to something like 80 pixels. Let's go ahead and search for a fast box blur in our effects and presets and drag the fast box blur on our shadow, shadow layer. And increase the blur radius to something like uh, 40. Yeah, that should give it a nice fake 3D look almost. So you can see that it makes it look um, not flat. So the next step would be to select our sh or select our Taurus, duplicate it once again, bring it all the way up, and rename it to highlight. And again, we don't need four color gradient here. Select it and remove four color gradient. And for this, actually, we don't need a stroke. So make sure you use your stroke is set to none. And for fill, make sure you select radial gradient. And in here, go to edit gradient. And make sure you select, uh, select white color for both points here. And for this point, for opacity point, make sure you select it to zero and then click OK and you can drag this handle like so. And uh, right, that's done. And we could select our tours once again and, con uh, and duplicate it again. OK, bring it all the way up and let's rename this to mask. And once again, select the mask layer now and remove the full color gradient. And the next step would be to change the highlights track map option to alpha map if you don't see this track map option just press f4 until you see one right like that and then select your highlight and you can just drag it like so actually let's press s for let's press s for scale set the scale to like 80 and adjust the position like you want to. This will also give it more of a 3D look. So if we turn this off, you can see that it's adding that fake 3D effect to it. So at this point, our work inside of this composition is done. Let's go ahead and back, go back to our project for, uh, space and create a new composition. And let's name it BG. And now let's set it to an actual full HD resolution, so 1920 by 1080. Click OK. And now once we're inside our main composition, let's drag our Taurus to it like that. And let's go ahead and create a background. So right click, new solid. And let's rename it to BG. OK, we have a BG for our BG. That's interesting. And bring this all the way down like so. And let's actually change its color. Let's quickly add fill. Drag it to the BG layer and let's set it to something like a dark, dark color. So dark, dark red would do it like that. Okay, click OK. And that's done. 
Now let's go back to our torus. The first thing we need to do is uh, give it a rotation, a rotation animation pretty much. So select the torus, press R for, uh, for rotation, and Alt click the stopwatch like that. And here you type a small expression like show time asterisk 20. So this will give it a rotated a rotation animation, like a really subtle one, exactly what we need. Then select your torus once again, press P for position. And again, Alt click the stopwatch here and type wiggle. And then you can press tab to get these parentheses. And inside here, type 1, 20. Then click away. And if we preview this, you'll see that our torus will be like subtly wiggling a bit so that's what we want next step would be to add glow effects to this so the right click create new adjustment layer and let's rename this to glue oops glue stay organized and go ahead and search for glow in effects and presets and they will be under stylized just grab a normal glow, uh, glow and drag it to the adjustment layer in here, what we need to do is let's bring the glow radius all the way to like 300. Then let's select a glow and duplicate it. And for this glow 2, let's increase this to something like 500. All right, that's done. And we could set the glow radius or glow intensity for our glow 2 to sound like 0.8. Okay. So that's the next step. Let's add another adjustment layer, new adjustment layer. And let's rename this to noise. And you guessed it right. We're going to add noise effect. So go to effects and presets and search for noise. It will be under noise and grain. And grab the normal noise and drag it over to the noise adjustment layer. And here, make sure you uncheck the use color noise option and set your noise to like three. And let's preview what we have so far. Now this might get a bit laggy, so you might want to drop your resolution to half or even a third. So I'll keep it at half. So if you preview this, you'll see that, well, this doesn't look all that bad. So let's actually select our torus now and click Control D to duplicate it. And let's bring our torus here and let's click S for scale. And let's decrease the scale to like 50%. Oh, let's actually make it 60. And let's bring it to somewhere around here. And let's bring this torus. Let's actually rename this to torus small. So we know that this is the torus that's small. And bring it under our main torus. Let's rename this to torus main. So we'll know that this is the main one. Let's duplicate our torus main. And let's bring it to here and click S for scale and bring the scale all the way to something like 300. And let's place it somewhere around like, it's like so. Okay, that should be fine. Let's rename this to Taurus uh, Big. This will indicate that this is the biggest Taurus that we have so far. So let's bring it under our main Taurus like that. We could duplicate our Taurus once again, so select the Taurus main, control D to duplicate it, and bring it to here, click S for scale, set the scale to like 200, should be fine, and place it like so. And let's rename this to Taurus uh, medium. If you preview this now, this might get a bit laggy, or actually not. So the next step would be, or actually suggestion of mine would be to go to project, and here when it says ABPC, uh, I'll click this uh, until it says 16 BPC. This will reduce all the color bendings and distortions that might be happening on your screen. Let's just make sure you do that. And let's preview this now. And so far, this doesn't look bad. But as you can see that all our toruses, right, are rotating in the same manner. So. Yeah, so the colors are matching and we don't really want that. So the, the easy way to avoid this would be to, let's say, select the big torus here and go to effects and presets and search for uh, transform. 
and just grab a normal transform to it. Okay, and uh, for the rotation value, you can change the the angle, like let's say 90 degrees. So therefore the colors will not, oh actually let's get this random value, why not? So therefore the colors will not be like matching too much, you know? And you can do that for the others as well. So select the transform, press Control C to copy the, the effect. Go to Taurus Small, duplicate it here, and let's set the different rotation angle and do the same for the medium like that and set it to this why not so if you preview this so we'll have a lot more variation going on right now which is cool and yeah why not and then bring our main torus on top above every other torus because it will be in the middle and that's exactly what we want so at this point our tutorial is pretty much done there is not really much more to this uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. I'll make sure to answer you as soon as I can and help you out with everything that I can. So I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.